The world <laughs> lost a comedic genius, the passing of Paul Mooney, the godfather of comedy. He died yesterday at the age of 79 from a heart attack. Our Anita Bennett takes a look back at his career. Paul Mooney is being remembered here at the Laugh Factory on Sunset Boulevard for opening doors and paving the way for other black comics. We gave everything. We are so loyal. We're like some old hound dog. We are so loyal. We built that White House. You know we built it. The slaves built the White House. You think they call it the White House by mistake? Over four decades ago, Paul Mooney helped put the Laugh Factory on the map. Without him, Laugh Factory was not exist. Jamie Masada opened the iconic L.A. Comedy Club in 1979. He says Mooney was the first comic to take the stage, and he returned thousands of times. He was the godfather of the comedy. He was the godfather of all Black Lives Matter, because he was the person, first time he was talking on the stage, about injustice was done to African American in this country, and nobody Everybody was upset, everybody, but he'd stick by it and he made it happen. Early on, Mooney worked as a writer for Richard Pryor. He wrote for a string of iconic TV shows and appeared in films. Here at the Laugh Factory, younger comics say Mooney opened many doors. Paul Mooney was, as a black man, a, a comedian pioneer, but as a comedian, he was a trailblazer. One of the first comedians to speak their truths in the most authentic and sincere ways to make the world realize that good comedy makes you laugh, but great comedy makes you think. Mooney's impact over the years cannot be disputed. He helped a lot of comedians, from Dave Chappelle to Eddie Murphy to Chris Rock to, you name them, to Robin Williams, you name them. Arsenio Hall, everybody. He helped everybody. And the Laugh Factory is planning a memorial tribute to Paul Mooney next week. There's no doubt there will be many Hollywood insiders here to pay their respects. Reporting from Los Angeles, I'm Anita Bennett for Start Your Day. Thank you, Anita. Uh, one word best describes Mooney, and that is fearless. He is a man who used comedy to speak candidly about racism. He was a head writer on The Richard Pryor Show and In Living Color. He worked with Red Fox, Eddie Murphy, and of course, Dave Chappelle, and influenced countless other comedians, including, I'm pretty sure, uh, the man who's about to join us right now to talk yeah. about Mooney's legacy, a comedian, Red Grant. Red, welcome back, and thanks for joining us here on Start Your Day. Uh, th this man was fearless. Uh, Dave Chappelle yesterday said he is the best to ever do it. I mean, that's high praise coming from a guy that many feel is the best to ever do it. Yeah. Uh, what kind of influence did he have on you? Well, yeah, uh, my influence, was, uh, his influence to me was just to show me, don't be afraid when you're on stage. You know, let your truth be your truth. And when your truth is your truth, that nobody can even, you know, touch you. And I remember meeting Paul Mooney for the first time in Washington, D.C. And it was amazing to see how many people were crowded around him in this after set that we was having. And he was still telling jokes. He could tell jokes for hours and hours and hours, but they weren't jokes. It was just his story. That was his life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he did it like no other. You know, he is the first person I ever seen as, and I said, he's a king of God in comedy. Wow. Nobody else I can ever see it who mm. people crowded around and wanted to see. Yeah, and Red, um, his presence is something that, as we looked at the uh, old clips of him, there was this thing he did, these piercing eyes, um, and then, you know, he'd look off like that, you know, that one shot that we've been showing of him on stage. It was intimidating. Yes. It was um, intoxicating. And then, as right. you said, the no-holds-barred approach to race, um, that was everything to us that he had this white mm. captive audience that he would deliver yeah. it boldly and unapologetically. Um, tell me where you were and what you thought of when you learned that, that we lost him yesterday. Oh, man, I'm in Washington, D.C. Uh, and when I heard about it, it just saddened me so much. I, I was looking on, yeah. you know, we all look at Instagram and 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 it, his face came up, and I was just like, nah, not not Paul no, Mooney, yeah. nah, not, not legend. And it just, I just had to shed my tears and just stay. I was on my way to somewhere, and I just stayed 
in the house and just mourn for, for, yeah. for my brother because I know we lost a person that speaks for us that was mm -hmm. not scared when you might it and um and I can I, I can remember like he didn't care if you walked out of his show what he was saying he just said it <laughs> and you had <laughs> yeah. we actually laughed at, we actually laughed at the people who you know will walk will walk out because we know his <laughs> truth was touching so deep in their soul that they could not you know stand it and but it was the truth it was the real truth and and he not, he, he didn't you know he, he talked about everybody and, and that's the key to life and he was liked by all races and colors and, and creeds and religions and it just it, it's sad i know we all get to a certain age and you know but you know we yeah. just hate to see our, our our real kings go our real kings go and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna miss him yeah. i'm gonna miss him crazy yeah, we'll always remember uh, with Paul Mooney, his contribution he made to the to the world of comedy. Uh, talk about that a little bit more because he, he told the truth and he told it right to your face. He, like you said, he right. wasn't afraid, <laughs> fearless, uh, spoke about race. Uh, I remember I just told a story the first time I saw him, it was in front of an all-white audience and he's talking about white people like they're not even there <laughs> and they're laughing at every one of his jokes. <laughs> Ray, you're on stage. I, you got great stage presence. You're you're one of the funniest guys I know. How hard is that to do when you make people feel uncomfortable but make them laugh at the same time? Well, you know, some people you know choose to not make people uncomfortable, and some people choose to make people uncomfortable. You know, uh, I choose to make people uncomfortable. I, I want them to know like my real truth. And my father, like my father was telling me last night always tell people the truth and that's even in comedy just like you have to live your truth whatever your truth is and i can remember this is a funny story i saw uh paul one day at hollywood park and he was standing outside and, and, and we've been knowing each other for a long time <laughs> and i walked up and this was pre-pandemic and i went to mm -hmm. i said what's up paul <laughs> he, he was like and i went to stick my hand out he said you know i'm gonna shake hands Right. Yep. He gives you the fist bump. Yep. <laughs> yep. He gives you the fist bump. He always gives you the fist bump. He won't shake your hand. That's right. Yep. Fist bump. <laughs> and I remember that I was all excited that day to see Paul. <laughs> he hit me Aww. with that stop me right in my back. And that was that was pre COVID. Like, you know, he should we should have known then that that the pandemic was coming. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was your warning. Um, you know, and he for, was for all the, that you, I don't know. For all the times you saw him on stage, um, and maybe for the times you just kicked it, you know, as comedians tend to do sometimes, mm -hmm. was there ever a time, because yeah. again, you know, he went there a lot, where you said, oh my God, I can't believe he just said that. Any time that you can remember where you were like, I know he's a real one, but this? It was too many times. I toured with Paul like <laughs> early in my career, and I used to look at him on stage and say, "I wish I could say that. I wish I could yeah. be that direct with, with, with white people." Like, I mean, he told it to him just like, and he told black people the same way. But he, he yeah. fought for mm -hmm. us, you know. He was like, he, did. he was a leader, and he fought for us. He was. <laughs> He was a missionary. He was just he, he just he just told it like he's he's supposed to have told it, and it, it's it's yeah. like it, when he went on stage. Like sometimes you'll see him at the comedy store, you'll see him at at the improv, or you'll see him at the Laugh Factory. But he was on. He had been on stage for two hours, two and a half hours. I mean, wow. and comedians mm -hmm. know to stay on stage for two and a half hours to keep people like oh that their attention. Uh, that long is it's, it's hard and it, that's how you know yeah. he didn't write the material um, he uh -uh. was he lived the material and mm -hmm. and you know comedians out there right now if you listening you have to live your material you know you have to live yeah. what you talk about you can't talk about things that don't go on in your life and mm -hmm. and he, he looked at it from yeah. a different perspective 
and he was super intelligent so, you know mm -hmm. no go ahead i was gonna say you know when you mentioned truth and the conversation you had with your father yesterday and you know that paul yeah. that was what he was about do you feel like it ever cost him because mike and i were talking about this earlier you know, mainstream wasn't exactly where he was welcome. You know, he was not going to be hosting the Tonight Show because truth does not live <laughs> necessarily there. You think it ever cost him? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't say it cost him. Look how he's being revered. You know, it, sometimes when, yeah. you know, you think people might think things are costing, the, pe the real people who are really right. listening yep. are the people who put him on that status and platform. Um, you know, this mm -hmm. man wrote for Rich Pryor, first of all, you know, I mean, let's, let's start there. You know, he wow. wrote for the greatest comedian in the country and still did comedy at the same time. A lot of writers, they write for a, a comedian and never do comedy ever again, but he wrote for, mm -hmm. uh, Richard and, and Richard gave him his love and his credit and he knew things that about life that, that people would never, would never touch on. And that's like that's what I was gonna say earlier. Like, you know, this man was super intelligent. He studied the game. He studied people. He studied our, mm -hmm. our universe. He studied our world. He studied our country. He studied people, everybody. Mm -hmm. He just studied. And that's what we gotta do as individuals. We can take, you know, Paul mm -hmm. Mooney's life and, and make it a part of our life. We need to start looking at life how it is and telling mm -hmm. the real truth. And once we do that, you know, we'll be happy. He was in a happy place. When he left stage, yeah. he didn't care about what you thought of nothing. He left and was still talking right. trash as he leaved this way. You know, they, you know, he had that little, that Paul <laughs> Mooney. <laughs> He'd stand outside of the comedy club and still be talking trash. You know, he, and that's oh, what made him fun. <laughs> Well, we love it. We love hearing you talk about him, Red. I mean, he just, mm -hmm. he can't, he's irreplaceable. And um, just to hear yeah. guys like you reflect, ladies too, um, it's just, a, it's a good thing. And we're happy that you came on. Thanks so much for coming on to talk about yeah, Paul you. and starting your day with us yeah, once thanks, again. Red. We appreciate you.